Damn right I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Artie Bulger, and I work for ESPN. I'm here today because I'm here to set a new Guinness World Record for the most presentations ever given on cross-platform measurement. <laughs> Good luck, Alan. Um, we, uh, we've been doing cross-platform measurement for a long time, as everybody probably knows. Um, but in, in 2010, uh, we introduced uh, the ESPN XP initiative. And it was really about raising our, our, gain, our game and our, our investment in cross-platform measurement. And when we introduced ESPN XP back in 2010, we pledged that we wanted to take cross-platform measurement from custom project to standard practice. And at the first uh, SIM forum in 2012, based on some of the learning from XP, we did a groundbreaking cross-platform study around the World Cup, which really revealed a lot to us. But at that first forum in 2012, I was on this stage and I talked about the right metrics for cross-platform measurement. And in simple terms, it was about things like how many, how often, and how long. But also, I talked about the fact that we were still unable to answer the most fundamental questions about media use across platforms. All of this is still important because before we can effectively evaluate engagement or impact, as Aaron was talking about earlier, we need reliable measures of audience behavior and exposure. Um, we just can't do one without the other. So, shortly after that first SIM forum in 2012, Based on the potential of two SIM-funded pilot studies, which Cameron alluded to, we announced the collaboration with Comscore and Arbitron to create the first five-platform content measurement service dubbed Project Blueprint. And just 18 months, just a little over 18 months now since that announcement, thanks to the amazing effort by both of those companies, I'm pleased to say that Blueprint has captured the attention of the industry, and we're finally making some progress. Now, to reiterate what Cameron described so well, and death by Venn diagram, which I love. The key to Blueprint's potential is its hybrid design, integrating census and panel data with a single source calibration panel, giving us the scale and granularity to produce reliable national audience data, particularly, particularly duplication of audiences across all five platforms and across three content types. It's an elegant modular design that will allow Blueprint, in my opinion, to grow with the industry and allow us to follow the consumer. But the process so far has not been easy, as everybody, as all my friends in Comscore and Arbitron or now Nielsen Audio knows. So let me quickly fill you in on what transpired since we last met at this forum last year. Soon after we shared the initial results of Project Blueprint at ARF's audience measurement conference last summer, uh, in September, the Federal Trade Commission ruled on Nielsen's acquisition of Arbitron, which was certainly a disruption and very much a concern at the time. And here you see uh, the, the FTC documents with the final consent decree on the right-hand side. In doing so, fortunately, the FTC did issue this consent decree, and that decree ensured that Blueprint would continue ultimately under, under the direction of Comscore. But the transition process took several months to complete. In fact, it took until February of this year to complete and slowed our progress during the fall and winter of last year. But by then we had a lot of good data to share, and so we focused on communicating the value of Blueprint literally in conferences all around the world. And as a result, awareness and interest in Blueprint soared. So I'm very, op very optimistic, and my sincere hope is that under the leadership of Comscore and now the guidance of SIM with this phase two project, Blueprint will move forward with the accolades of the industry behind it and heighten necessity ahead. As Bill Duggan of the ANA proclaimed last fall, measurement is the biggest issue that will influence the rate of growth for multi-stream advertising. This after he shared the results of a Nielsen survey among ANA members that found that investment in multi-platform advertising will grow from 20% to 50% in the next three years. That's the heightened necessity. So at ESPN, we've been working very hard to keep this momentum moving for Blueprint. Immediately after the FTC's consent decree, we signed a new agreement with Comscore to demonstrate our continued support and commitment to Project Blueprint. We continue to do lots of Q&A work with Comscore, and we will be participating in the industry pilot test sponsored by SIM to test phase two of Project Blueprint as Cameron laid out. So what about the data and what's new? Well, we did have a lull in production due to the Arbitron acquisition. So we've been studying data mainly from fall 2013, but 
we have just recently received data through January and are beginning to catch up. But the slides that you're about to see focus on September data. And what's new is the basic consistency in the data, the patterns of duplication, net reach, and time spent across platforms, and now our ability to get detail at the program and event level. We also continue to mine insights on media usage and behavior that we couldn't have known without a product like Blueprint. For example, on a total population level, one of the unique capabilities of Blueprint is the ability to detupe usage of each platform for each user. So one of the in insights that Blueprint reveals is that all media users are essentially multi-platform users to some degree, but there is some variation by demographic. On average, all demographics use around three media platforms over the course of a week. Only a very, very small fraction rely on just one platform each week. Not surprisingly, young adults use the most platforms with half using four or more platforms in the average week. Uh, but even geezers like me, 50 or over, are likely to use three or more platforms. I personally use 13 in the average week. Very proud of it. Now, while five platforms can yield 32 possible discrete combinations of media use, Blueprint also reveals that about 80 to 90% of users fall into just five of these combinations or, or groups. So first we have TV radio, no digital in this bucket whatsoever. This group, su not surprisingly, tends to skew older, representing one third of media consumption, uh, media consumers uh, 50 or over. Then we have TV, the TV PC radio group. This group is smaller, uh, but also older skewing, and at this point, we account for about half of the 50 plus group, which you see there under adults and also uh, men 50 plus. Then we have TV smartphone radio. This is the largest group for 18 to 34s and 35 to 49s, including four platforms, but not tablets. And then TV smartphone radio, continuing with the younger skewing group. This group is similar to the previous, previous group, but smaller because of no PC users. And then finally, we have TV, PC, tablet, and radio. This group is larger among 18 to 49 year olds, and about 60% of tablet users fall into this group. We'll fill in the remainder with TV, PC, smartphone users, almost exclusively 18 to 34, and then the balance with uh, the five platform users, which is a, r a rare group, and the rest containing multiple combinations, rounding out those 32 discrete groups, but you get the message. So just a glimpse of the insight that we can gain about the general population. There's a lot more to learn. Here are a few things that we learned about at the media brand level for ESPN. Now for ESPN, we continue to see consistent patterns of unduplicated reach across the five platforms for ESPN content. In September, ESPN reached 36% of men daily, growing to 90% or 106, 106 million men over the course of the month. Now we can dissect that reach and find that in the average day, the exclusive audiences to ESPN digital and radio media increases the reach of ESPN TV by about 40%. Important insight for an advertiser that needs to extend reach to men on a timely basis. And we can now do the same analysis at the program and event level. Here we're looking at the reach of, Monday night foot at the, at the reach of a Monday night football television audience on September 16th of last year and content across our digital and radio platforms during the pregame and in-game telecast times on that day. During that time, we see a 30% lift in reach from exclusive audience users of digital and radio between the hours of 7 o'clock and 12 midnight. So this is where the rubber is beginning to meet the road. This is where it's exciting for us to be able to really look at this, um, uh, look at the multi-platform behavior occurring for individual programs and events. But we also con uh, continue to see um, patterns that begin to repeat themselves. These are principles that hold up about multi-platform use. So we continue to see, for example, that multi-platform usage emerges over time. In the average day, most of the ESPN audience is using one platform, predominantly television. Just 16% are using more than one platform in a typical day. But multi-platform users grow to over one-third in the average week, and ultimately half of all our users become multi-platform users over the course of the month. And while half of all users in September were multi-platform users, what's most interesting about that is that they represent 84% of the time spent with ESPN Media in September, basically accounting for most of the impressions that we generate. So the more platforms used, the more time the audience spends with our media, including television. In short, increasing the number of cross-platform users will increase 
the overall size of our audience as most of this usage across platforms is incremental over time. So with measurement of usage and exposure across media platforms unfolding with Blueprint, this in combination with other measures will give us greater understanding of the impact that we see in cross-platform advertising. For example, the ESPN XP tracker, which runs on a continuous basis, can isolate the audiences that use one or multiple ESPN media platforms. This simple chart, which is very similar to the chart that Aaron showed before based on their media mix modeling, this chart shows results of three real ad campaigns that ran across four ESPN platforms, clearly showing how ad, aware ad awareness grows with the number of platforms used. So this in combination uh, with the data that we'll be receiving from Project Blueprint going forward will enable us to correlate the impact we see on ad performance to the levels of usage and frequency of exposure that we see across platforms. Just one example of how we plan to use Project Blueprint as a standard practice going forward. So here we kind of stand at the crossroads. A lot of good things happening, not the least of which is what we're doing with, with this one major product, uh, uh, Project Blueprint. We're experiencing, clearly, a period of unprecedented change in technology and media behavior, which is not about to end any, anytime soon. And more than ever, we know now that siloed measures alone are inadequate for cross-platform insights. We need additional layers of research to inform our strategies and decisions and explain the impact that we see on advertising. And Project Blueprint alone has proven it can provide a precise understanding of the total picture of cross-platform consumption insights that are no longer a luxury, but a necessity and something that we all need. From an advertiser agency perce per perception, it's needed for actual exposure for multi-platform uh, campaign planning. For programmers, we need it to understand how to grow and so serve our audiences. And for really everyone in this room, because we continue to fall behind the consumer, and each and every day we fall further behind. Thank you very much.